So in this video, we're going to do something a little backwards. We are going to find a z-score from a percentile. Now in the previous videos, we had spent a lot of time looking up z-scores to get a percentile. That means we moved from the edges of the z-chart to get the percentile in the center of the z-chart. But now we're going to be given a percentile and we'll have to go find the z value. All right, so let's buckle in because this can get a little confusing. And what you need in front of you is your calculator. So if you have your calculator, make sure you have that nearby. And also, please make sure you have your z-score chart. And we're going to be in the positive page uh, for this example. OK, so there's going to be a lot of homework problems where they're going to give you a percentile score. Now let's kind of like center ourselves on what this problem is asking about. It says, imagine a test with 63 out of 100 points being the average. Okay, so my, my average is 63, okay? Now, the question is, is we're gonna find the 90th percentile score, which is X. So we want to find out what score higher than 63, because 63 is my 50th percentile. What score higher than 63 is the 90th percentile? Now, what else are we given in the problem? Well, we know we have a standard deviation of 5. So if we go up by 5, this is 68, this is 73, and this is 78. That means even if you're three standard deviations away from the norm, you're not getting higher than a 78. This is a really tough <laughs> uh, test here. Now if I go down by my standard deviation, every standard deviation mark, this will give me a 58. And then a 53. And then a 48. So what number in blue would be a 90th percentile? Well, unfortunately it's not any of these right on the money. But what we have to find is we have to find the number that is the 90th percentile. So we're going to first use our z-score formula, which will make us use our chart. And then I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. So we are going to write our z-score formula. z equals x minus mu divided by the standard deviation. So here's what we know. We know we're looking for x. We know our average. In this case, our average is 63. We know our standard deviation, and our standard deviation is 5. But we do not know our z-score. We know our percentile, but as I said many, 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 many times before, a z-score is not a percentage. But we can use our z-score to find a percentage but in this case, we're going to use our percentile to find the z-score that would go here. So we're going to look at 90th percentile, so 0 0.90. That's, that's the 90th percentile written as a percentage, and I'm going to add some extra zeros. So we're going to look at 0 0.90000 in the chart. Now, where I'm talking about, I'm in the chart, in the center of the chart. Let me make that look a little nicer there. We're going to look at that in the chart. So let's go to our chart now. So what we're looking for is the number that's close to 90,000. That's the, you know, of course, that's the easiest one, you know, to find that is 90%. So let me go and get my highlighter out here. Let's see. Looking for nine with four zeros. Well, here's a number that's pretty close. That's nine zero one four seven. And here's another one that's also pretty close. 0.89973. So which one is closer to 90,000 or 0.90000? Well, the, the one that's closer is going to be this one. So my z-score 
is going to be 1.2 plus the 0 0.08 or my z-score for this percentile is 1.28. So going back to our problem here, my z-score taken from the z-chart was 1.28. Okay, so let's review what we did. We were given the percentile, which is not a z-score, but we can use the percentile tile, excuse me, to get to the chart and look it up. And therefore it's 1.28. Now what we need to do is solve for x. Now to solve for x, the first thing we need to do is undo this division. Using the inverse operation of multiplication, the division and multiplication make a 1. 5 divided by 5 make 1. And you would call that canceling, but I like to just call it simplification. So now this whole equation gets rewritten over here because the 5 times the 1.28 is 6.4. And that's equal to what's left on the right hand side of this equation, x minus 63. I'm going to add 63 to both sides, add 63 to both sides, and here's what we have. x is equal to 6.4 plus 63, which is 69.4. So what this means is that this flag here at 1.28, standard deviations away from the norm, or 69.4 is the 90th percentile, which means that 90% of the data, whoops, that's a little too sloppy there. 90% of the data is below that blue line. Okay, so that's how we find a percentile. We take the percentile, we look it up in the chart, in the middle of the chart, because that's where all the percentiles are. Then we convert that to a z-score, plug it into the equation, and solve for x. Now that is a pretty challenging feat if you haven't done some basic algebra or college algebra for a while. So it might be nice to also learn how to do this on the calculator. So using the calculator, there's a cool set of commands inside the vars uh, menu. So you hit the second button once, let go, and then click the VARS button. Now this takes you to the distribution menu. And that beautiful distribution menu was filled with beautiful things such as um, doing binomial uh, probability distribu distribution functions and probability cumulative distribution functions. So here's uh, where we're going to go. Option probably in the first few choices is to invert the normal curve. And invert norm if we type in 0.90 or 0.9 if we wanted to. And our 63 and our 5, this will give us the same answer as all the work we just did above. So the format of this problem is to basically put in your percentile, comma, your average, comma, your standard deviation. Now let's show this to you on the calculator. Now I have my calculator set up in classic mode, and this is a newer calculator so it actually gives you a help menu. If you have an older calculator than this one, you will have to use the parenthesis above the 7 key and the commas, or sorry, the parentheses above the 8 and 9 keys, and the comma above the 7 keys to type this in. So if I go second vars, which is right under the down arrow key, now I'm in my distribution menu, I'm going to click down to inverse the norm, and now I'm going to type in, so you can see from a previous class, I have that typed in as 0.90, hit enter, 63, hit enter, and hit 5, hit enter, and paste it, and there it is, my inverse norm equation, just like written here. And the result means, look at that, 69.4, just what we found up here. So this result means 69.4 is the score 
indicating the 90th percentile. Or you could say that 90% of the possible scores are below 69.4. So again, 69.4 is the score indicating the 90th percentile. Now, choose your own method to find the Q1, which is the 25th percentile. And then choose your own method to find the 75th percentile. Well, I usually don't get any takers because once on, on doing it by the chart method, because once you know the calculator method, it's pretty sweet. You can just get your calculator back and you can go click the second key and then the enter key and you have the actual equation back. So if I change this to 0.25, this would give me my first quartile. And if I hit second enter and I click the arrow back and I change this to 0.75, then I have this, the third quartile. I'm going to write these down. So the 25th quartile, so inverse norm of 0.25 comma 63 comma 5 is equal to 59.6. So if you ever do have to show your work, write out the equation to let me know how you got your answer because sometimes I find students make typos, but they wanted to type this in, and that way you save yourself a lot of partial credit if you told me what you intended to type in, but you accidentally, because I wasn't witness to you typing that in, the moment you did that in class, please make sure you write down this equation. So here are the two answers. So finding the IQR is Q3 minus Q1, and Q3 minus Q1 is 6.8. So there was only a 6.8 point difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. And well, everybody, thank you very much for watching these videos. Hopefully um, you will put some questions in the forums so I can answer them and others can read them as well. And um, yeah, feel free to ask questions and shoot me an email or a question in the homework section. Um, Thank you for doing a great work and thanks for watching.